Hello, Catherine Bierstein here. Another video about Power Apps and Azure SQL Server. Today I'd like to deal with the issue of large SQL Server tables. I haven't seen any other videos that are dealing with a large data set, so I thought it might be interesting. Um, I have a table here called Clean Data, which has 42,500 and 38 rows as you can see from the select max loan ID from DBO clean data and how I got that in um, if you'd like to try this yourself is I went to a site called 19 free public data sets for your first data science project and I took the loan data from the lending club which was redacted of course and I'll put that link in the YouTube comments so I then brought it into Excel, the CSV file, and imported it into SQL Server, first eliminating the kind of floppy um, text, well, wide text fields, just because they had some characters in them that wouldn't import and it was just a pain. So I used here the task import flat file and that worked pretty well but another tip is to make sure you make all of your fields nullable so you don't run into problems with saying this field can't be not null just mark them all nullable and it should import pretty easily okay so now I then in power apps I created an app called loan data and we'll see how fast it loads here because the first screen has a gallery with that clean data as its data source so it is going to show you a second here all of the rows from the clean data table And they come in fairly quickly. You can see here, DBO clean data. Now the problem is, and we'll see when we try to scroll through this table, because it, yes, it has 42,000 rows. So it does scroll, it's kind of slow, but it actually is moving, which is kind of impressive given that we are in a browser. The thing that it does though is it seems to fetch the rows in groups of 100 and then it stops and then to get to the next ones you have to like go up and then scroll down again and it'll stop at 200 so clearly this is not like a good solution so I'm just going to do this um, see it goes to 200 so if I kept going and did that um, 20 times I would get 2,000 rows. Now why do I get 2,000 rows? Because I have set the app settings, the experimental feature here, to 2,000 which is the new data row limit for non-delegable queries. So it will, it will bring back 2,000 rows if you keep clicking that <laughs> down arrow. Uh, so that's not obviously a good solution. So we have to go to filtering and okay. I have set up some filters here. I've got state, verification status, grade, subgrade, annual income, and last payment date. And those are fields that are included in my table. And how do I make this work at all is by using collections and some indices. And let me just show you quickly how this works when you select less than 100. It works pretty well. If I collect more than 100, I'll show you what happened in a minute. So if I select, say I want it to be greater than 70,000, kind of blanks a little bit, <laughs> but it works. Okay, so to make this work acceptably, 
I first, of course, have a primary key. And I made indices for the fields that I'm filtering on. So I've got five indices here. Then I make collections so that I have local data to populate these drop downs. So let's see what that looks like. Now this, I wanted to make distinct, just take distinct values for the states um, and these other drop downs and then sort in alphabetical order. And that ended up being difficult to figure out what the solution was for that to nest distinct in, in, in these two functions to nest distinct in a sort function. And I happened across this one blog post. Thank God people are um, posting here because somebody came up with the solution. Somebody said, is it possible to combine in one function distinct and sort? And how can it be possible to create a collection using distinct? And this kind person said, I tried a lot and came to this sort distinct source column and result so that you have to use this keyword result so that's what i did and go on the whole it worked so i end up with collections that say result okay so that's how i was able to use those two together to get collections that allowed me to then populate these drop downs with the collection. Okay, now there's one um, that's a little different because I wanted to deal with as many operators as possible. We don't have a large collection of operators in Power Apps. We have, I, I wish it was something like between, but we don't. We have equals, greater than, in less than, and or not exact in, which is basically just um, a case sensitive in and in. So I used in my items for the gallery filter DBO clean data, I used equals, I used and. I used greater than or equals, and I used in. Okay, now one thing uh, in ended up being a bit of difficulty. I wanted to use the subgrade, which has a letter and a number. And I just wanted the number. So that I had to do a write and say, you know, take, just like if you were in Excel, you'd say write and then comma one. And I also wanted to sort and distinct. So I wanted to do three functions together. And that ended up, I took, <laughs> wasted hours on it. And I could never get it to work with a collection statement, a clear collect statement. So I ended up, I said, well, let me use a view. And then that'll illustrate that views are working now these days with Power Apps, which is something new too. So I created a view, this view at first, where I created one, let's see, where is it here? This view, view subgrades just took the right and then I made a view off of that view that did a distinct on the view. So now I got grade numbers and there was only five numbers in there. One, two, three, four, five. And they're not in sorted order. So then for my subgrade, I sorted my collection. Now let's look at that collection again because it's a little different. Clear collect and then name of the collection and then the table dot grade number. So it's simpler. This is the normal 
way that you would do a clear collect when you're not creating a collection when you're not using the sort and the distinct. So I used a view, which was now possible in Power, which is great. Okay, so the thing that happens when you have more than, oh, let me talk about the last payment date. You see I have a last payment date here, and that's not a collection. That's simply a date picker. And also note that the text income is just a text input. Okay, so um, I use that and, and um, that works as well. I just say greater than or equal to this number. And I tried to use the last payment date, so I will copy the from my notepad down here. I will copy this into the items and see what happens. Now at first it looks, oh, it looks like it's going to work. Oh, great. Oops. Now it's not going to work. And because, oh, let me get rid of that. They don't need that. At first it looks good, like it might work. And it's greater than equal to last payment date. But then the deadly warning shows up. And it simply says an error occurred on the server. And that's because if you read a lot of blog posts, that you can't use in greater than or less than or equals with dates in SQL Server, which is, is unfortunate because that's something you'd like to do a lot. So hopefully that that will be fixed at some point soon. Okay, so couldn't use my last payment date. Okay, so as long as I'm less than 100 and I can change these things and it works pretty fast. And it is, as you see here, this ID is 40,501. So it is searching through 42,000 plus rows, which is pretty amazing. But I'll show you a command here and then we'll duplicate it that gives you see down here 138 rows okay so it's just over a hundred so California not verified a and a3 so say we say this to California not verified a and a3 and make this zero so that doesn't filter it out anymore. Now this results in 138 rows. So the last row, as we can see here in SQL Server, is 41,636. Okay, but when I scroll down here, I don't get 41,000. I am going to get to 32808. Well, what's 32808? Well, 32808 is, guess what? 100. So it only brought back the first 100. So if I go like this, and bring it up and force it to go down, it will actually get down to my 40,000 number but like I have to manually like do this so and there is no command that I could find so far that you know where there could be a little action button that would say load more so I am I've got some queries out about that and I hope I can find something that will do that so that people would know oh I don't have everything so I've got to load more than it would be useful. So if when I find that, um, I'll do another video, let you know about it. Thanks for watching.